Hi, uh, this is Amit Kirti here. In this video, I would like to talk about Huffman coding. So the items for discussion are Huffman coding introduction, traditional example of doing coding, then an example for Huffman coding, and then we'll make a comparison between traditional coding and Huffman coding. Now, Huffman coding is a way of encoding characters into a sequence of zeros and ones. Huffman coding can be applied also to perform lossless data compression, which is a byproduct of the coding mechanism. Huffman coding was actually developed by David A. Huffman in the year 1952, and he did this as a part of his PhD when he was doing it at MIT. Now, Huffman coding, if I were to summarize, it actually generates a set of codes based on the frequency of occurrence of characters. So when the data is coded using these characters, the resulting encoding has a shorter length compared to a normal encoding that we do using say 8 bits to encode the data. We'll see more on this as we uh, check uh, the example. Now let's assume that I have created a new language and the following are the characters in my language. So I just have five alphabets in the language, namely A, B, C, D, and an underscore. Now let's assume that I write a novel uh, based on just these five characters. So my novel would contain words which will have just A, B, C, D, and underscore. Now let's assume that I give this novel to a friend of mine and I ask him to find out how many of these alphabets are present in the whole novel. So he goes and does the donkey work of reading the whole novel and then he comes back with the frequency of occurrence of each character. So he tells me that A is present 35% of the time in the whole novel, B is present 10% of the time in the novel, C is present 20% of the time in the novel, D is present again 20% of the time in the novel and the underscore is present in the rest 15%. So this is a distribution of all the characters in the novel. Now suppose I want to encode these alphabets into a set of zeros and ones. So if my language just had say four characters A, B, C and D, then I could use only two bits to encode each alphabet. So if I had just four alphabets, then A could have been just 0, 0, B could have been 0, 1. C could have been 1, 0 and D could have been 1, 1. But since I have an underscore, I need minimum 3 bits to represent each of the alphabets. So A could, has to be represented by say 0, 0, 0. B shall be represented as say 0, 0, 1. C shall be represented as 0, 1, 0. And D shall be represented as say 0, 1, 1. So basically I have, I need to use 3 bits to represent each of the alphabets and then underscore is represented as actually it should be 100. Zero, zero. So suppose I have a word in this language, let's say I created one word and this is one of the words in my novel that I had written. So it the word is A, D, C and A. So if I were to encode this text using the bits, then it would be 000, zero, zero for A. 0, 1, 1 for D, 0, 1, 0 for C and again 0, 0, 0 for A. So if I do the count uh, of the length of these bits, I will see that there are 12 bits in this whole text. So now the point to ponder over is, can I have an algorithm which can shorten this length of the encoded text? So the aim of Hoffman coding is to do two things. One is to encode the data, for example, to encode A, D, C and A into a set of zeros and ones, and also to ensure that the length of that encoded data is less. So let's see how Huffman coding algorithm works. So I have these characters, I have jumbled them up in such a way that the occurrences of the, the characters are arranged in such a way, the alphabets are arranged in such a way that they uh, they, they represent the increasing order. So B has 10%, C the underscore has 15%, C 
is 20 percent d is 20 percent and a is 35 percent now hoffman coding algorithm says pick the uh, characters that have the least percentage or the least value and join them and make a subtree out of it so i have two characters b and underscore which have the least values so i pick them i make a subtree out of that since b is 10 percent and underscore is 15 percent a, a subtree will have 15 plus 10 that is 25 percent then rest of the elements just write them as it is so c will have 20 percent occurrences d will have 20 percent occurrences and a will have 35 percent occurrence so let me just clean it up and write them back so this was the state just two minutes ago so again hoffman coding says pick the two lowest values and make a subtree out of that so who are the two lowest values c and d so i make a subtree out of that and push it back so the other subtree was b and underscore whose total cumulative value is 25 percent and the only guy left over is a whose value is 35 percent so now again hoffman coding says pick the two lowest values so i'll clean it up and write them again so now i have to pick the two lowest values that is 25 percent and 35 percent so i will pick b underscore as the left and a as the right and make a subtree which which show gives me a value of 60 percent and i push it back into the tree and then i write back the other wa, other subtree which i did not touch during this round of operation so cd which has a total value of 60 is written as it is so now i have two subtrees one subtree which has a total count of 40 percent and two edges in it and the other one which has 60 percent and it has a subtree as shown here so my next step would be to take this subtree and make it as a left part of the tree and take this subtree and make it as a right part of the subtree so i pick the one with the left uh, with the right and the other one as left and i join them to get a complete tree now what we see here is this tree has all the vertices or rather all the alphabets and they have been arranged in the form of a tree now what we do is we number the edges of the tree now one thing you can note from this figure is that the, 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 the edge length or the total path length for the vertex which has higher percentage is generally less since a had 35 percent to reach from top till a i have to do two jumps and c and d i still have to do two jumps and since b and underscore had the least values so i use more jumps to reach b and underscore so what this tree effectively does is that those characters which have higher occurrence rate will have smaller lengths and those which have least occurrence rate will have bigger lengths so now let's try to give a number to each of these vertices so for a the 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 coding scheme will be one one because to reach a i need to go one and a one so for b it has to be one zero zero for c it is zero zero so for c it would be zero zero and for d it will be zero and one and then we have just we are just left with the last one that is underscore so the coding scheme for underscore will be one zero one so these are the codes that we have generated using the hoffman tree that we created so now i write the codes again so if i were to rewrite the word that i was trying to encode that is a d c and a and i use these new coding schemes then the encoded text will be a would be 1 1 d would be 0 1 c would be 0 0 and a again would be 1 1 so now if i write back the encoding text which i had written previously using static encoding for a it was 0 0 0 for d it was 0 1 1 for c it was 0 1 0 and again a it was 0 0 0 now if i compare 
the encoded text that I created using Hoffman coding and the encoded text using static method that is three bits for each character. Then I see that using Hoffman coding, I am actually able to save four bits in this particular string of encoded data. So Hoffman coding actually gives you a shorter string and a better encoding mechanism. So the only difference between static encoding and Hoffman encoding is that in static encoding, each character has a fixed length code. Whereas in case of Hoffman coding, some characters will have shorter codes, some characters will have longer codes. So the shorter codes will be for those characters which occur very frequently in your text and longer codes will be for those characters which occur lesser in lesser quantity in your in your in your set of alphabets so by using huffman encoding you can compress your data now wikipedia gives a list of alphabets from a to z and they are frequently occurring percentages so probably somebody would have gone through the whole english literature and figured out the number of times each of the alphabets comes in in the most famous novels from shakespeare or probably in the encyclopedia and they have come up with these percentage values and they see that e occurs most number of times and then the next is a and t and similarly some other characters so what we can do is we can create a hoffman tree out of this and then we can encode our data so when we create a hoffman tree character e will have the shortest length whereas characters like z will have the longest uh, encoding characters so hoffman tree helps you in creating this um, unique method of compressing data so thanks for watching this video